In this problem, we're told a model rocket rises with constant acceleration to a height of 4.2 meters, at which point its speed is 26 meters per second. A, how much time does it take for the rocket to reach this height? B, what was the magnitudes of the rocket's acceleration? And C, find the height at the speed of the rocket 0.10 seconds after launch. So I went ahead and drew what's going on here, right? So we have this rocket. We know it's going to be starting from rest, right? Because on the launch pad, it's not moving. And then it's going to right, accelerate up 4.2 meters. Right, and at that point, right, when the rocket, after it's gone 4.2 meters, we know its speed is going to be 26 meters per second. Right, so that's basically what's going on. And so the way we're going to solve this, or let's just go ahead and start with A, actually. So for A, what we're trying to do is find how much time it takes for the rocket to reach its height. So basically, we're trying to find how long it takes us, or it takes the rocket to travel uh, 4.2 meters. So what you want to do first is always write down the given. So what information are we given? So first thing, we're trying to find time, so we're going to say t equals question mark because we don't know what the time is. And then what are we given? So we know the initial velocity of the rocket, or v sub 0, is going to be 0 meters per second. That's because the rocket is going to be starting at rest, right? It's not going to be moving. And then we know the change in the position of the rocket, or delta y, is equal to 4.2 meters. Right? That's going to be how far it travels upwards. Right? So we know delta y, and we also know the velocity at the end of this interval. Right? So we know the velocity, or the final velocity at the end of this interval, is 26 meters per second. And so what you should notice here is we're given three kinematic variables, meaning if we use the kinematic equations right here, right, what we can go ahead and do is solve for t. So notice we have v sub 0, we have delta y, and we have v. And so what we're going to want to do is go ahead and solve uh, for t, right? And so the equation we're going to use for this one is this one right here. And keep in mind it says delta x, but delta y and delta x are replaceable, right? It doesn't make a difference. It's just a variable. And so we're going to be using this one right here. So basically delta y equals v plus v sub 0 over t, or sorry, over 2 times t. So we're trying to do solve for t. We have delta y, we have v, and we have v sub 0. So let's just go ahead and plug it in. So 4.2 equals v plus v sub 0. Uh, v is 26. Uh, that's just 0, right? So 26 plus 0 is still 26. And then divide by 2, right? 26 divided by 2 is just 13. So you're just going to get 13, and then we multiply by t. And if we want to find the time, you just divide by 13. So basically, it's just going to be 4.2 divided by 13 is going to be how long it takes, or the time uh, that this interval takes, right? And when you do this, you're going to get 0.32, uh, 0.323, and then it's just going to be in seconds, right? That's how we measure time through kinematics. Uh, but yeah, 3 point, or 0.323 seconds, that's going to be how much time it takes. So this is your answer to A. Now let's go ahead and move on to B. So for B, what we're trying to find is the magnitude of the rocket's acceleration. So notice last time what we did, we solved for T. Right, given the kinematic variables, but in this time, what we're going to do is uh, solve for the acceleration, right? Because we know it's going to be constant. So if you look at the equations here, we have delta y, we have v sub zero, and uh, now we have t. So we have four variables now, right? We have these three and this one. So you can really choose uh, any equation to solve for a, as long as it contains variable a. So you can't use this one, but you can use any of the others. And I think the easiest one to you is the, uh, use is the first one. So we're going to be using the equation at the top: v equals v sub zero plus a times t, right? Because notice we got t from the last problem v sub 0 we have, and we have v. So all we have to do is plug in and solve. So we know v is 26 equals v sub 0, which is 0, so we can ignore it, plus a, which is what we're solving for, times t, 0.323. So if we want to solve, just divide by 0.323. Uh, right, so you want to do 26 divided by uh, 0.323. And when you do that, you're going to get a is equal to about 80.49. Right, so keep in mind I use a rounded value here, so it might be a bit off, but basically it's 80, uh, you can just round it to 80.5, I guess. 80.5, and then the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. So this is going to be the constant acceleration throughout this interval, so 80.5 meters per second squared, that's going to be your answer to uh, B, so this is B. Now let's move on to C. So for C, what we're trying to do is find the height and speed of the rocket 0.10 seconds after its launch. So for this one, let's just write down the given for this interval. So what do we know? So we're trying to find the height, right, which is delta y, right, the change in its height. We're trying to find that. We're trying to find the speed, which is v. So v equals question mark. And then we're trying to find, or we know it's going to be 10 seconds, or 0.10 seconds after launch. Right, so we know the time this for this interval is 0.10 seconds. What else do we know? So we know the acceleration is constant throughout this entire interval, right, the whole thing. So we know the acceleration is 80.5. I'm going to use the more rounded value, so I'm just going to use 80.49 here seconds so or sorry not seconds meters per second squared so that's uh, the acceleration and then we also know it starts at rest right so that's not going to change so we know the initial velocity v sub zero is zero meters per second and so notice we have three of the kinematic variables again so we can choose one to solve for so the one i think i'm going to start with is just v because 
I think it's the easiest. So we're going to use V equals V sub 0 plus A times T to solve for it. So the final velocity V is equal to the initial, which is 0, times the acceleration, which is 80.49, times the time that allotted, right, which is 0.10. So 80.49, and then 10. Multiply it by 10, or sorry, 0.10. So when you do that, you're going to get V equals 8.049. You can round this to just 8 or 8.05. I'll just say 8.05. And then it's going to be meters per second, right? That's how we measure velocity. So this is going to be the first part of the velocity, 0.10 seconds after its launch, right? So this is your first part of C. So I'll box it C. And then for the next part, we're trying to find its height. So Again, we can use uh, whatever equation we want as long as it contains delta y. And so the one I'm going to use is uh, this one right here, delta x, or well, in this case, it's delta y, right? So delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. So plugging our numbers in, we're solving for delta y because that's going to be the change in its position or its height, essentially. v sub 0 is still 0, so it starts from rest, times t, still 0, uh, times 1 half a, the acceleration is 80.49. Right, 80.49, and then multiply by the time allotted squared. So it's just going to be 0.10 squared. Right, so all I got to do is plug this in 0.5 times 80.49, and then multiply by 0.1 squared. And so when you go ahead and do that, you're going to get delta y equals 0 0.40245 uh, meters. So you can round whoever you want, you can just say 0.4 meters. But essentially, its height is going to be 0.4 meters, right? That's how far it travels. So this is your second part of C. So this is the height. This is the velocity for C. So those are your answers. And then this is B, and then this is A. But yeah, so these are going to be your answers. And hopefully you found this useful.